Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to Saving Data in iOS video tutorial series. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to save your object graph to disk using the NS coding protocol. Persisting object graphs in your app is a matter of implementing a simple protocol. Once you have that protocol implemented, you can then archive your graph. Essentially, iOS will traverse the object graph and, and, and save any associated references. This means that the reference object must also implement the NS coding protocol or your app will fail with an error. There's also another requirement. In order to use NS coding pro protocol, your objects must be a type of NS object or the saving will fail. This may or may not be an issue for you, but you should keep it in mind before you implement it. Finally, you should also be aware that the process can be slow and take a lot of memory when dealing with large object graphs. NS keyed archiver is the object responsible for persisting the object graph. This takes a root object, which is meant to be the top of your object graph, if, if there is one, and it is from this object where all the other objects are scanned. The NS key archiver essentially takes those objects and converts them into an independent stream of bytes. Believe it or not, the object's identity and all its relationships are preserved, although objects with weak references will not be persisted. The object graph essentially boils down to an NS data, which you can then save to disk. You are ultimately the person who determines what will be persisted in your objects, and you do that using coders. Objects are read and written to using these coding objects. To access a coder, you need to implement the aforementioned NS coding protocol. This protocol defines an initializer and an encoding method. Both of them pass encoder coder objects. In the encoding method, you encode each of, your pro each of your properties according to a key. There are various encoding methods, encoding methods per type. In your initialization method, you read those properties back by calling decoding methods. You make sure that the keys match to fetch your values. In this demo, we're going to be using the NS coding protocol to save our objects to disk. And I've already started a project here. And first thing I have to point out is that we're not working with a playground. And the reason is I found some weird errors happening with NS coding inside of playgrounds, but that same code when moved to a normal iOS project seems to work fine. So I'm not too sure exactly what's going on here there, but I've already set up a project for us. And this project is a simple library. If we come down into my navigator, you can see we have a, a net library data P list and you can see it contains some keys for books and authors. And the books just contain books, a title, publication date, page count, and an author ID. And there are various different books in here. And then there are authors as well. And you can see we have first name, last name, and the author ID so that they can be correctly associated with the correct book. Next, if we, when we go back to our view controller, we simply grab that plist data and populate the books based on what's in that plist data as well as the author. And you can see here, we go through and we create each author object. We add it to our library object and we associate it to the correct book. Before we dive into the demonstration, let's just check out the actual objects that contain our data. The first one is a book. And you can see a book is just a type of NS object and it contains title, publication date, number of pages, and author. It has a description and it has a simple initializer too. So basically what it's doing, it's just containing the data found in the plist. Same with authors. If we go to the author, we have a first name, last name, and author ID. And this is also a type of NS object. The reason these are NS objects is they have to be to work with NS coding. If you're not using an NS object, then you will not be able to save your data using the NS keyed archiver. And when we go to the library, the library just simply contains an array of books, an array of authors, and contains a description. And when it you print out the description, it simply loops through the books and prints out the book's description, then loops out the authors and prints out the author's descriptions. The objects themselves are really simply designed, and that's so you can understand what's going on here from a higher level. As I mentioned, this code simply reads the plist and creates the books and the authors from that. You can see here, we can print out our library. If I build and run my app, we will now print out all the books and all the authors, as you can see right here. At this point, I want to save my data using NS coding. 
Before I can do anything, I need to make my objects conform to the NS coding protocol. So first I'm gonna switch over to book. And what I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to make sure it conforms to it by, by adding NS coding like so. When I do this, I get an error in my project. And this is telling me that I'm not conforming to the NS coding protocol. There's a few things we need to add. One, we need to add an initializer that will initialize this object from the coder. So I'm gonna type required. This is a convenience initializer, and you can see it provides with me coder, a decoder coder. Now I'm gonna to check to see if those properties are available to me, and I can do this using the guard statement. Here I'm decoding object for key since this is a string, and I'm gonna cast it as a string as well. I'm gonna be doing the same for the publication date. The nice thing about the guard statement, if any of these objects aren't located in the decoder, then we can simply exit the initializer. Once I have those, I'll just simply call my init method, like so. And here I'm gonna call decode integer for key. And you notice that I didn't put this in my guard statement. The reason for this is that whenever you call integer for key, it's always going to return a number, in which case we don't have to guard against it. The reason we were guarding against the decode object for key for title and the decode object for key for publication date is that those keys may not be in actually in my bundle, in which case then I wouldn't be able to properly initialize this object. If number of pages wasn't put into this bundle, then what will happen is it will just return a zero. At this point, we have my initializer done. Now I need to create an encoding method. And I simply create the method encode with coder. And these are where I set up my fields. So first I'm gonna encode object and I'll pass in the title and we're gonna give this a key of title. Now it's really important that you get the titles of your fields to match up with your titles in your initializer as well. If these are not matched up, then your initializer won't find them and that will produce a nil result. And you can see we have lots of other options to choose from. I'm just gonna simply choose object from now. And since the last one was an integer, I'm going to encode my integer. At this point, my book is adhering to the NS coding protocol, and I can actually use that on this one object, but I still can't use this on the object graph, meaning if I tried to save the library object, it would fail because all the other objects in the object graph, such as author, do not adhere to this protocol. I'm gonna do this now. You'll also notice that we have a property called author, but we didn't encode it, and that's because that is a optional, a weak variable, so to speak. And these will be populated at runtime, but they, we will have to populate them ourselves. We will not be able to get this data from our bundle that we are saving. I'm gonna be doing this both to the, to the author and to the library.
At this point, we have everything conforming to the NS coding protocol. We can now save everything to disk. I'm going to switch back to my view controller here. And just underneath my print statement, I'm now going to create a do catch block. Next, I'm going to get a reference to my file manager. And now I'll get a reference to my document directory. Now that I have my document directory, I'm going to create a save file. And this will be the ultimate location where my objects will be saved. I'm going to call URL by appending component, and this is just simply going to be called library bin for binary. So now that I have my save file, the final thing I need to do is actually save it. And I'm simply going to call NS keyed archiver. And I'm going to call archived data with root object. And I'm going to pass in my root object, which is my library. And this will convert that into an NS data. And as you know, once we have an NS data, we can simply write it to a URL. And now we have saved our data. And here we'll print out the results. I'm going to stop this. And now I'm going to build and run. Here you can see in the console, we have our data printed out, so we know it worked. Okay, I'm gonna stop this, and now let's restore this. I'm going to simply comment out our saving right there. And now we're going to restore it. I'm going to create a variable called library read data. And now, remember, since we're working with an NS data, I can simply call a method on NS data, which we've been doing throughout this series, contents of URL. Now that I have the data, I can simply unarchive it. We'll call NSKeyed unarchiver. And the method we're looking for is unarchive object with data. Now we simply pass in our data, which is our library read data. And then we're going to cast it to the library. And what we'll do is we'll close this out here and to avoid. Now that we have this lib, we're going to print out lib, and this will print out all our books in our library, as well as our authors. And there they are. That's it for this video tutorial, but as always, we'd like to leave off with a challenge. In your challenge, you'll be saving an object graph to disk and then reading it back out again. Since the NS coding protocol is a bit twitchy in a playground, you'll be using a regular app instead. For more information, check out the challenge document. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.